All right, Jada. Jada, where are you, where are you from originally? Where did you grow up? Florida, Miami. Florida, you said? Yeah. What part of Florida? Miami. I was in Miami and Palm Beach. Tell me about your family. Well, I wasn't really calling my family, you know, but, you know, we really have conversation. They, you know, abused me my whole life. My father didn't really want to have a, you know, a female child, so he took it out on me and my, my mom. My mom and my grandma did crystals, you feel me? Spoke their life. And somehow I got onto it at 12. And I've been doing it ever since. You started working as a prostitute at 12? Yeah, in Smoking Crystal. This was down in Miami? Mm -hmm. This was Palm Beach. Palm Beach. And, you know. And your dad didn't want you as, as a female child, do you think? He didn't, want, he didn't want any female kids. He just wanted to have boys. And I happily to end up with 11 brothers and be the only female. I'm sorry? I happen to only have 11 brothers. You have 11 brothers? Female. Yeah, and wow. I'm the only female, all blue. He, he had 11 boys and he wanted one more? No, so he, he didn't want a female kid. So he wanted all boys. Wow. So he took the fact that he had a female child out on me and my mom. In what ways? And physical ways. Physical? So no, not sexual? Somewhat. Yeah. <laughs> no, my mom, my mom had died when I turned six. And, uh, Your mom died? Yeah, from a car crash for me and my grandma in the car. It was on my third birthday. It was about two hours in the morning the next day. And um, we had a car crash because she was trying to you know, smoke at the same time and driving. And, uh, you know, truck hit the car. You know, my grandma ended up paralyzed. I was also being diabetic, and I was the only one who took care of her. And she was diagnosed with cancer like three weeks after. Your grandmother was? Hmm? Your grandmother was? Yeah. My mom had already died. So you lost your mom, then you lost your grandmother too? Mm hmm Being the only one who took care of her on her diabetic issues since three. And, uh, and that's how you ended up on the streets at 12? Yeah. I was a runaway kid my whole life. Yeah. Was my brother's always following me in my dad's footsteps. Um, my dad gangbanged and all that kind of shit. We didn't know that. And, you know, I had uh, found out that, he, you know, and that he did that shit. And we had drugs everywhere. I would see him, but I wouldn't touch him. I didn't want to do that. Crystal was already enough for me having my med uh, mental issues. I have, like, a very high tolerance of anxiety and shit. So it's, like, it's hard for me to be able to explain and process things. It's, other people, I guess. Because your anxiety gets in the way? My anxiety is very high. Yeah. So the things that I do and say always, you know, are hope to be reasonable or, you know, understanding because of the things that happen to me. Well, my four brothers and along with my father at six did rape me. So I had to live with that. I really didn't want to talk to nobody my whole life. I never really wanted to have friends. I don't even know who my family is. <laughs> I tried to keep contact with my brothers. Once I moved out from dating this guy for a year, he lived in Compton. And my dad's where my dad's from, Compton. He met my mom, my mom's Mexican. Your and mom is Mexican? Yeah. <laughs> she just happened to be helping her sister out in Compton, I guess. And that's when they met. And then when she was diagnosed, you know, pregnant with me, but he still didn't know it was a female. She was scared to tell. And so she had me in Florida, Palm Beach. Hmm. And yeah. Uh, How did I, you first get introduced to doing this kind of work? What, well, Crystal? The prostitution. My mom would take me with her. Your mom? Hmm. So your mom was my doing mom it? My mom and my grandma did it. Your mom and your grandmother did it? Yeah, but my grandma had quit, but she was a mental mind to like, tell my mom what to do in certain situations. So my mom was that type of person who would have to explain to me when I grew up I, that this is what I have to do to survive. And P 
people that seem to care. They basically, you know, they judge me for it. You know, you you mess with this person, you mess with that person. How old are you now? I'm 21 now. 21. I turned 21, May 27, two, and my, the year I was born was 2002. You don't have children? No. Not ready for it. No, you're not. When, when did you come to Los Angeles? I came to Los Angeles last year. I think it's been at least... Why did you come here? Well, I was dating this guy for a year, and I visit back and forth. You know, he seemed pretty cool, you know. Uh, one day, you know, Last year, I decided to move with him. This was like right after July 4th last year. And he put me immediately on fake. And it was like, damn, like, I haven't done this in a while, but then it took me back to my mom. That's the reason, you know, like, it tore my life apart. But I knew all females that I basically had contact with was doing. And it brought a lot of memories as a kid. Have you ever done anything other than this kind of sex um, work? No, my um, dad's boss, which is what I refer to as a little kid, as daddy told me. <laughs> but he said me and my 27-year-old cousin, the only cousin that actually gave a fuck about me, actually pulled me to the side and said, it's okay. When I said, you know, this is what you're gonna do. This is how you're gonna do it. And it's gonna all just work out fine. That's what makes me, you know, make it through the day. You know, I've always been a suicidal kid and all kind of shit. So, we got set up without even knowing that we both knew him. When you say set up? I mean, like this, like, to, to, we're both put in a room at different times and just be confused with one of us being in the room and not knowing the other person in the same room and then being approached. I wanted another. I was 16. 16 was happening when I first learned how to use a gun. Learned how to use a? A gun. To do what? Shoot my cousin. I was forced to be told and made to shoot my cousin at 16. My dad's boss, apparently, the, was the game member, you right. know, the leader, whatever. He had gave my dad two thousand dollars or whatever. And my dad owed him two thousand. Being a little sus about it, suspicious, you know what I mean? So that's why my dad is dead. <laughs> he killed. But, but, but what were you supposed to do with the gun? No, I was told on my phone because it's me being told that this is my dad's friend. I kept them in contact just in case I need help. So I get a call one day in the mix of making food. And I answer the phone and I say, you know, like, hello, who's this? Because it's a random number. It's not under the name I put it under. And um, he's like, hey, it's uh, your uncle. I need you to meet me at the park. We got a park around the corner down the street. Just a block down from where I lived at. And uh, I said, okay. Like, he kind of scared me because he was saying it like so aggressive. And with that being said, it, it, it scared me. But I was like, you know, taking it in and said, are you okay? He's like, yeah, just come meet me over there, princess. And I'm like, okay, hang up. And I go over there and he makes me get in the car. And um, I'm taken to this empty, like, it's like gala, like a stage type thing. And, uh, he put the earpiece in my ear and said, I'll be right back. Just listen. And he told me the instructions, and I was led to, like, the store right there. It was the gun right there. Um, I really was supposed to be at home waiting for my cousin to get home from the store. But that didn't happen. I lived with him, and then apparently my cousin was in there tied up to a chair and blindfolded him. Until he finally, you know, was aware that it was my voice that I had to do it. No one ever, I mean, he really didn't know what my dad's friend's face looked like. Because my dad's friend always wore a mask. And that's what made it weird. It made it weird. and it, it, I never really wanted to be close to him. 
I never did. I would hardly give him hugs, hardly say anything to him. And you were forced to kill him? I was forced to pull the trigger. On your? Cousin. On your cousin. Yeah. I was put, I was put in a mental hospital for that. Detained. No wonder your anxiety is so high. Hmm. Detained. I've been in and out. Psych ward hospitals, you know, foster homes, therapy. It's, Certain things, just even looking at a knife could possibly trigger me. But and doing this kind of work brings you into that kind of yeah, stuff I never, all the time. I would never, what's why I would do it again? Yeah. I could never. I never, and I regret that from that day, and I can remember every little thing that happened. I was the only person I really opened up to, you know? Being 325 pounds in high school, when I was in that weight. Mm-hmm. Changed my life up. You know, started getting like boyfriends. I only had like at least three or four boyfriends since college. I guess like, I graduated early. I was homeschooled. You were homeschooled most, homeschool? most of my life. Yeah, kind of did more. Had a lot going for me. Did basketball for six years, and started doing my drugs again, like bad, like I did when I was twelve. I don't know. It's just something just so. Unique about it, it was cool. <laughs> is, that, is that crystal meth or crack? Crystal meth. Crystal meth. I started crack when I came out here. Like four months later or whatever. I know. Uh, and, and now you're working Fig, Figueroa Street. Are I you, try not to. <laughs> are, you, <laughs> but, are you doing that with a pimp or without? Hmm? Are you doing that with, a, with somebody? Not really, no. <laughs> it was more like a friend directed me, not a pimp. Because one of my. X put me on thing the first day I got to him. I ran into two pimps, almost died twice. I'm sorry? And I ran into two pimps, I almost died twice. But I've been through that before. So, um, where, where, do you, where do you stay? Do you have a room? No, I don't. <laughs> I basically met somebody when I came out here and escaped from the pimps. I've been with him. Uh, it's difficult with him. I don't want to get into that. <laughs> it's a totally different story. And Crystal Meth, you probably get by without sleep, right? Yeah, very easy. Very easy. I could just smoke, 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 and be like, okay, I want to go to bed. <laughs> but, but you can make good money. You can make good money on Figaro Street. Yeah, you could. But another thing is, for me, the things that are said about me, me like, like a model, me being pretty, me being with the beautiful skin or whatever, a nice walk. I don't want to give my body up. And one thing that could happen is just to fuck up your life so bad. And I don't really see it as the drugs being as much of a fuck up as doing that shit. So it's just that type of shit. It just reminds me of a lot. You've had so many bad breaks. Um, you, uh, do you have any friends at all? I got to the point where when I hit 18, I shut the whole world up. I never greeted anybody. I never really talked to anybody. I never even like, went to a restaurant and actually ordered something for myself. You know, I had to do all this shit online, and I never wanted to ever come out of my room. Never. And, you no. Know, when people try to make communication with me, I just, every time I come home, it's in that same corner. I just think, draw and write, and just regret everything, and cry. I was really going through a big stage of depression. It wasn't easy, but then I gave the world another chance when I moved out here. And you've seen a therapist before? Yeah, many times. I've at least been through 13 therapists. The same answer to be said. About a year, at least. I don't trust pills, so I don't really take them. I don't. I, can't, I, I just can't trust pills. I, people know that because, like, I'll tell them, well, I do this drug, but I don't want to do that drug. Like, I'm up, 
anything, but I'm not gonna try it because I don't know what the result could be. So I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I really don't wanna ever have to go through this again. I'm trying to make it better, but I'm trying to deal with a cancer and being my man. It's kind of hard. Because I can't really say that I've actually experienced love before. And he's the first one that I've ever opened up to. He's the only one that I've ever said I love you to. And the only one that I've ever showed me how it feels. Because it's not a normal feeling that I feel every day. Who's that? His name's Angel. And he is a... He's a cancer. He's Irish and Mexican. And he lives right here on Fifth and Pedro. How'd you meet him? It was like four in the morning and I'm leaving from the I just dropped him, you know, right on the train and I ended up over here. <laughs> my phone was dead, I was trying to find somewhere to charge my phone. And I don't know, something told me to go to Fifth and Pedro. I'm like, what the fuck? Like how do I even know about this spot? You know, like, I go over there and he compliments me walking by. As I've been walking since 8, it's 4 o'clock in the next morning. Um, and he's just like, cute. <laughs> I'm like, oh, he's cute, whatever. I don't usually turn around for people. I don't say thank you. I don't say you're welcome. I don't ask questions. Just keep moving. But uh, I realized doing that shit it just, it makes me lose so much. I miss out on so many opportunities. So many things that could have been best for you, and now it's just worse. So um, I turn around and I ask him, do you have anything I chose before? And, yeah, of course, we met over a portable charger. <laughs> so that whole day on, and this day on, it's been difficult. Ooh. He's had times where he says he's giving me another chance, but it's really me giving him another chance. His thing is, he thinks it's just him. Everything revolves around him. Yeah, you can be a cancer, but that's not an excuse you can use every time. It's not an excuse at all. It's just zodiac sign, something that you are. But there's more to that. You know? It's, if you want to, okay, I'm a Gemini and a Taurus, but I'm, uh, I can be stuck up and have an attitude issue, but I'm gonna fix it at the end of the day. I'm gonna make an effort to make it right. I might have had times where I shut the world out and I don't talk to people, and I just want this for myself. Okay, yeah, you have money in your pocket, fuck it. You don't put no money in my pocket, so, so what? I'm gonna still put 20 bucks in your pocket in here and get some drugs. <laughs> Cause we both do drugs. I went with him also drugging me with fentanyl on purpose and on accident. First time was on purpose. You, tr you tried fentanyl? No, I didn't try it. No, he did. I didn't know he put it in my drink. He put it in your drink? Yeah. And another time that he did it, I couldn't walk for a week and a half, two weeks and a half actually. The day I got back up, I could not walk. I hardly could walk. It was like I almost forgot how to walk. I couldn't even see right. I didn't eat those whole two weeks. I didn't open my eyes, but I was breathing because <laughs> I would wake up here and there, but pain is, and if you knew how many times that I've had that drug, you would think that I'd be doing it by now. I could never do that. Jada, what's your biggest fear now? Him leaving me. I'm sorry? Him leaving me. Oh, really? I don't have family out here. I don't know my family. I've had a time where my ex has sent people to the point where they're so good at it, they made websites, fake news, um, YouTube and shit, stuff like that. It's the point where they even got cops to come look for me. 
because I was supposed to have a twin sister. Yeah, we grew up kind of together. The only reason I don't mention her is because I just feel like it's another me, and then she could have went through the same thing I could have went through. And me being a sister to something like that, I don't think I could ever. Ever. I don't think I could ever handle it. I think I would have just honestly killed myself from just seeing that. I can imagine what she would do. Just doing it. You know, so, you know, we have pictures of her. I mean, pictures of me when we look so much alike. It's like, it's, we're like twins, but we have totally different birthdays. I'm two years older than her. I'm two years older than her. How do you feel about working as a prostitute? Um. I said, I don't like it. The thing that gets me is the whole money thing. Me having money. We're, we're, I mean, do you have any belongings, any possessions other than what I see on you now? No. <laughs> this is everything you own? Yeah, basically. Do you have yeah. a phone? No. I, uh, <laughs> I did. And what about the money you made yesterday, last night? It all goes down. to keep going another day, four hours more, six minutes, seven seconds, it doesn't matter. It just takes more and more just to prove way more. Uh, I think it's way more knowing it is way more than I've done yesterday or just five seconds ago just to prove to him that I care. Because he doesn't believe that this is my first time. My first time and he gives up too quick. You're, yeah. trying, you're trying to prove what to him? That I want to be there. That, that you love him? That I, yeah, exactly. Only that I can't say to nobody. I've said a million times. I've gone days without being able to say it. So he had to remind me. Because I've never said it. I've never had nobody to say it to. I never even could have said that I had a favorite family with them being in foster homes. I, I just can't. I just can't. Like, I, I walk around with you almost every day. If you don't leave me and I don't know where you are. I see you say, hey, homie, what's up, homeboy, homegirl? What's up, mom? Hey, dad. Just like, fuck. You made it this far. Yeah, okay, they're not here for you, I am, but I can still see the love that you have and they have for you. You actually you guys, like, you guys have a bond, I don't. I have to constantly tell them, at least you have somebody to come on. I'm stopped doing prostitution more, like, more than I've done it before, like, because that's all I hear from them. You're fucking this person, you're fucking that person. Oh, because I made one mistake last year. It was apparently I did something with his homie and I didn't know it was his homie. I'd never been introduced to him. Never. Never. And that time when I looked him in his eye and with no hesitation, I said, I'll never do that again. And I promise, and I haven't, but it's still been changed for it. Still. And that's the problem. He stays in the past. He doesn't work on being in the future. I guess says he loves me though. I don't believe it. You don't believe it? Mm -hmm. He doesn't try it. Not at least two times harder than I tried it to show. I've taken a stab wound for him already. I was taking beatings from almost everybody who's been with him. Cubans, it doesn't matter. Cubans stabbed me. Just right here, one shot is right there. Stop, almost had to have surgery. I almost didn't make it. <laughs> Getting on the ambulance, he told me he was coming. I was almost out being mad whole day, just like, oh, it's gonna stop, it's gonna stop. Like, it was just pouring out. Like, I, I couldn't. It was scary. I didn't know what to say. I just leave alone for about cops. Is there any other life that you would like to see? You you know like build build towards. Yeah, to get off these streets. To get off these streets. 
Do you like to get off the streets? Get off the streets? Hopefully him to be with me and okay. Build something up, maybe try college again. Maybe make friends. <laughs> try to make friends and people to remember. And I don't know. I don't know. Family is still very unknown. Um, I just want the best for me, the best for him. If he doesn't want me to, I'm still going to, because he doesn't have the right to say whether or not or whether he can. I'm going to, period. And although I give hands put on by him, it doesn't matter. I said, I'll take it. The day we first met, I said, I'll take it. Take any wound, head, or anything for you, because I'm a ride or die, I don't give up. Is that your best quality? What's your, what's your greatest strength? I have not even figured my own stuff out yet. I'm sorry? I haven't even figured myself out yet. But learning things on the street, I'm starting to learn who I am, little by little. At least I'm trying to. All right, Jada, thank you so much for sharing your story. Yeah, thank you. I wish you all the luck in the world. Yeah. All right, darling, thank you.